Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. We're reading from verse 1 to verse 5. And I know we have a time limit, so we should be out of here by half eight. Everybody will have enough time to reach home. Just kidding. <laughs> I just need about 20 minutes. You know, there are some preachers who just can't preach short. I'm just one of those preachers who can't just preach long. I think I'd have grown it, um, maybe with experience outside of preacher longer, but I just can't. I can't get the, to the point of preaching long messages just yet. Um, 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1, I did hear some pages turning, which is a good sound. You know, some places you go, you don't hear any pages anymore. Um, you just see swiping. Uh, you see it on the screen, you, you know. Um, 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1, and it reads this. The Lord sent Nathan to David, and when he came to him, he said, There were two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb he had bought. He raised it and grew up with him and his children. It shared his food drank from his cup, and even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Verse 4. Now a traveler came to the rich man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. David burnt with anger against the man and said, Nathan, as surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this must die. He must pay for that lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this time that you have appointed, O Lord. Lord, we know, Lord, that we are not here by chance. But we know, O Lord, that you have appointed this service even tonight, O Lord. Lord, I pray, O Lord, that your will will be done here tonight. Lord, I pray, O Lord, that your words will be said here tonight. Lord, I pray, O Lord, that my words shall not be heard. I pray that I shall decrease and you shall increase. Lord, I pray that you prepare the hearts and the minds of your people here today, and even those online, that when they hear this message, that they will be like good ground where this message will be like a seed and it will go into good ground and bring forth good fruit at the appointed time lord your will be done right now in jesus name i pray amen and amen today my message is entitled the traveler and we have a prophet nathan who went to david who was the king at the time. So we had King David, and Nathan the prophet came unto him and said, King, I need to have a word with you. I need to share something that happened with you. And David said, come man, prophet, talk to me. Tell me what happened. And he told them the story about two men, the rich man and the poor man. The rich man had many sheep, many cattle, a lot. He, he had abundance. But then there was a poor man who didn't have a lot, but he had one sheep. And the Bible clearly described that that sheep was like his own child. It grew up like his own daughter. If there was eaten lamb, that lamb was eaten lamb. It said, eat what they ate. That lamb was eating chicken. That lamb was eating potatoes. That lamb was eating anything they was eating. So we had the rich man. We had the poor man, we had the lamb, but somebody else was mentioned in the scripture. The Bible tells us, and then the traveler came. Today I want to talk to you about the traveler. Who does this traveler represent? Well, it represents evil. It represents temptation. It represents urges of fleshly nature. In the book of Job, Satan and God met, and God asked him, where were you? And he said, I was roaming the earth, Th through and through, one end to the next, corner to corner. The devil is the traveler. 
And this traveler is like a roaring lion seeking whom he shall devour. That's who the traveler is. And Nathan the prophet was telling David this metaphoric story in comparison to an actual event. You see, before this, there was a time when the kings went to war. The nations went to war. And David was a man who was a soldier at one time. He was a mighty man of valor. But now he is king. So he's a little more refined. He's a little more smooth around the edges. He's not out there slashing heads with a shield. He's not out there with a bow and arrow. He, he at home. He at the castle. He's king. So he has men fighting for him now. He has men, many men of valor fighting for him. And there he was at home resting. Whilst his army was out fighting, he was at home resting. And nothing wrong with that. He's king, so he could rest. So upon this day, he got up and he went on his rooftop. And he looked out and he saw a beautiful young woman taking a bath. Being the king, he shall look away and go back inside and just chill out. But he indulged. He sent for that woman. And some of us know the story that woman names was, was Bathsheba. Um, it's so amazing um, how funny the Bible could be sometimes. This woman was taking a bath and her name was Bathsheba. I don't know, it's, it's kind of ironic. So David sent for Bathsheba. And I don't know, we'll just have to let our imagination run on what went on. But whatever went on, it was adultery. And they went into an adulterous relationship. And David thought that no one saw it. David thought he covered his tracks. But here was Nathan coming with a story, telling David. And David says, surely as night follows day, this man shall die. You know what Nathan told him? This man is you. David would get cool. He cut him no blood. He didn't know what to do. He thought knew, nobody knows or nobody knew. But he forgot there's a God up above looking down with love. And when nobody sees, he sees. He sees. The traveler will come knocking on your door. Just as he came to David, he will come knocking on your door. The devil, he has one aim. To take as much people to the lake of fire with him that he could. He, to take you and steal that joy and steal salvation from you. And he has one tactic he has been using from the beginning of time. Setting traps for people to fall in sin. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Three weapons he have, and he used that constantly. And you know, I was looking at a fly trap recently. Somehow the other day there was a resurgence of fly where we live. And we put a, a sticky paper and we throw some sugar on it. And the fly would land and the car get back up. And we'll just watch them die slowly, you know. <laughs> Take that fly. You should never fly in this house. We just watch them die slowly. And I would look at one fly seeing his partner fly stuck there. And still, he would land on it. Ten flies and the eleven flies seeing eleven of them. And still, he land on it. You know, crazy enough, Mr. Lizard come and he see all these flies and he walk on it and he gets stuck too. Now, good, I'm glad he gets stuck because whole night they All they had those lizards by all there because they make a real noisy night. But I don't know what they be saying. And you hear one in this corner, one coming. I don't know what, it, what they're talking. I, want to, I wish I had a translator to, to hear what they were saying. Flies over here. We have plenty of mosquitoes here. I don't know what they're saying. But this. <laughs> Lizards be making so much noise. But the trap is there. The effects of the trap is seen. And yet these flies fly into it. Yet they still walk into this trap. 
And so too as humans, we know that there are traps. We know that sin is wrong. We know that there are some things we should not indulge in. We should not watch. We should not um, be part of. But yet, we walk into these traps with a smile on our face. Like normal. Like nothing is wrong. And the traveler is looking to take you into his traps. He's trying to take you into his traps. Because before you even commit the sin, you think it out up here. Before you commit adultery, you already think that in your mind about six, seven times. Before you go and rob that grocery store, it was thought out here, planned out. You think about what you're going to do here. It plays out here in your mind. Let me give you an example what happened to me some years ago. Driving down the highway. I have my radio on one of these stations. And I hear this man say, the lotto is $16 million. Imagine what you could do with $16 million. And I driving on the road, and I just, my mind went in a, in a, a whole days, and I started to think about the house I could buy with $16 million. I started to think about the house I buy for all my brothers and them. I started to think about um, a yacht I'm going to buy. I wasn't married yet, so I see myself in that yacht with a gold chain and women in bikinis all around, man. I, I, my mind started to go all over the place. I drive in a Range Rover, all kind of thing. And then I wake up and I realize, wait, it's not real. My mind played out. What could have happened? Like it was a movie. It was so Real, I almost pull into the bar ticket because without a ticket, you don't have a chance. <laughs> I almost pull into bar quick pick. I said, nah, boy. They played like a movie in my mind. That is how the traveler works. It takes you into a different dimension. You're sitting here in church. No much times I sit in church and my mind somewhere else. We'll break you right now, traveler. Come out of the minds. Get the hand, Satan. <laughs> no much times you, you sit down in church and the pastor preaching and you think about something else. Well, I'll go eat after, boy. I wonder what it have. I wonder if that gyro man will be open when I leave church, boy. <laughs> Don't let the traveler get the best of you. <laughs> the traveler travels your mind. And it's like your whole mind in a whole different place. Before you commit that act of sin, it starts here. He attacks your mind First, you're working hard in the garden, you're hot sun, and all you can think about is because you watch somebody WhatsApp, so they say, wait, but that curry blue looking nice. I wonder how that curry blue tastes in. I only probably do have unsafe friends in all the WhatsApp stories, but you know, all my friends, is this curry blue thing they're holding. Not my friends, really, but people I know. <laughs> and you think it oh, good, and in the hot sun. And you're working and you think away, but that curry blue could go down so nice on my back of my throat right now. That cold, beastly cold. And your mind run away. Your mind run away. Because that is how the traveler operates. You see, he went after Eve physically. And he showed her the fruit. He said, if you eat of this fruit, you'll be like God. You know what happened to her mind at that point? She started to travel. She started to see herself like God. She started to imagine herself like God. She started to think like if she was God. Her mind started to travel at that point. She saw that it was good and it looked tasty. Our flesh has an appetite for disaster. Our flesh have an appetite for death. And I'll prove that to you. Take any little child in this room, any baby at any age, put a broccoli and put some french fries and see which one they will choose. They choose any french fries. They don't know better, but they just know that that is the one they want because your flesh wants whatever is not good for you. When you buy a pack of cigarettes, have a big white and black label. Minister of Health, it's bad for your health, it'll kill you. Still. You're beating it and watching it. 
You know, there's, there's, there's one that checks all the cancer back in the um, cigarette, man. So let's beat it. Our flesh has an appetite for death. You know you're not supposed to be eating donuts, and I'm talking to myself right now. You know that that double is not good for you. But still, you see the doubles, man, you want to pull up. Your wife packed breakfast for you, number in Z, you know that. But just that doubles, man, you see that doubles, man, your favorite doubles, man, you see just one. It has happened. Gluttony is still a sin, you know. We don't talk about it much. This is the effects of it, but it's still a sin. <laughs> it's still a sin. And our flesh has that desire for everything that is wrong. And the traveler comes and he plays with that. He plays with your emotions. He plays with your, your cravings. He will travel into places. Young people, he will come into your head and he will travel and say, Hear what? Them church boys and them church girls, not nice, you know. You could be the one to change that fella. You're going around an unsafe boy, but my parents say he's not good for me. The pastor say, Don't be unequally yoked. But the traveler come and say, You'll be the one to change him. Red flag. Put a red flag on that. Put a red flag on that one time. The, the devil will come and say, God could use you to bring him to church. He come to church two times. He might even get baptized, but get married now. Nah. Die the end of that. No, there's exceptions, but that, I can tell you what, what happens. Don't let the traveler fool you. The Bible tells us that our desires, our own desires, has an appetite to kill us. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 tells us that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Hear what the Bible says about our heart, our inner soul. It is desperately wicked. There was a song back in the days when I was younger. Listen to your heart. You will see. Don't listen to your heart. You ain't want to see what you will see. You ain't want to see that. Run. If your heart tells you stand up, run. Listen to God. Listen to God. So we know our mind is easily traveled to unrealistic thoughts that may be tried to be acted out, and our heart is exceedingly wicked, how then shall we live? If our own flesh is working against us, how are we to become victorious? How then are we to overcome the wiles of the enemy? Well, for one, there's the armor of God. And in the armor of God, there's some type of helmet, or hat, or something they call it, helmet, are they? And that is the helmet of faith, Nah, I don't think it's helmet of faith. Helmet of pastor, pastor gonna know. This pastor gonna know. Helmet of salvation. You know what, what, what Jesus was trying to tell us? To get your mind saved. Make sure your mind is saved. Because before you could sin, here's where it happens. Here is where it happens. Put on your helmet of salvation. The Apostle Paul told us, he said, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. Say, take all those thoughts out and put godly thoughts. Meditate on my word. Meditate on God's word. Meditate on the Bible. Thy word have I hid in thy heart. That I may not sin against thee. David said that. Cover your mind with the helmet of salvation. Because the enemy is going to come and put all kind of things in your mind. I'm going to use the music that you listen to. He's going to look at the movies that you watch. He's going to look at all these things. Videos and memes and all these things. To activate your mind. To travel into different places. To bring you into a place where you feel is okay to walk into sin. 
What else can I do when I'm tempted, Pastor? What is there for me to do or say? James chapter 4 verse 7 tells us this. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. When the traveler comes and he comes knocking on your door and you know you're fighting that temptation and you know the traveler know your weakness. Eh? The traveler know where to hit you. The traveler know where to take you and pull you. He know you're better than your wife. He know you're better than your husband. He know you're better than your closest friend. Them same weaknesses they're trying to hide that nobody know about. He know about it. Come and whisper in your ears. Born up, boy, born up. You ain't feeling far, bear, boy. You can smoke some sense, you know, boy. Call that man wife now. Go on, messenger, boy. See if you see anybody online or everything. Double palm. The traveler know. We just come in here and I pretend to pull in double palm. My wife was like, where's this place? I said, girl, you even want to know. She said, don't pull, don't pull in there now. Nah. I want to go Hyatt. I said, I ain't had that kind of money. <laughs> I said, I can afford here. I didn't know what Hyatt. The traveler is coming knocking on the door, and there are some temptations. Physically, we can't fight alone, you know. But the Lord will always make room for you to flee or escape from it. <laughs> David fell into temptation. But young Joseph, when Potiphar's wife came and grabbed him by his coat, he do like what I would have done. Let go that coat and run. Some of us would have taken off the coat, you know, but not to run. Stay right there. Flee from youthful lusts. Don't put yourself in that situation. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Hand over your weaknesses to God. You feel God don't know you're addicted to certain things? You feel God don't know that you're, you're, you're weak in some areas? Submit that to God. He will take control of that. He can deliver you from that. He can deliver you from that. And I ain't talking about you had to come for an hour long and a pastor, a prophet had to pray on you and all kind of thing. And you had to... He can deliver you. Lord, I hand it over into your hands. Take control of that. Sometimes we make deliverance in, in the church see like it's a task. Like it's something that happened and you had to have a whole service just for that. You could pray to God and say, God, this is my weakness. Help me in this place. Take control of this part of my life. I can't do it alone. And I tell you this, whom the Son of Man set free is free indeed. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. When the devil come, know that he is there. Understand that God is not going to lead you apart to destruction. God is not going to ask you to drink no rum. He ain't going to ask you to smoke no cigarette. He ain't going to ask you to watch no porn site for do no research for church. He ain't going to ask you to call somebody else's wife and carry them out, or somebody else's husband, he don't operate so. God is a God of order. So you know that God will ask you to do certain things and flee from that resist the devil. Say, devil, get the hands. And start to pray one time, plead the blood of Jesus over that one time. The name of Jesus Christ, get the hands from here, boy, devil. And he will flee from you. The traveler came to David, and David made one mistake. He fed the traveler. The traveler come because he wants. He thirsty. Let me use the terms. He thirsty. He hungry. And his appetite is our souls. His appetite is our salvation. 
and David indulged. He fed the traveler. Let me tell you something about the traveler and sin. It will take more from you than he expected to give. Sin will take you further than you expected to go. It will keep you longer than you expected to stay. David started out as an adulterer, you know. He ended up being a murderer. But she got pregnant. David sent for, for Uriah back from, from, from the, the army and said, go and be with your wife. He said, no, not me. He was an honorable man. David sent a letter to the captain and said, put this man on the front line so he would, be die. he would die. He would be killed. So he started off with his mind lusting up here. He fed the traveler. He became an adulterer. He became a liar. He became a manipulator. And now he's a murderer. And here he was sitting at home thinking nobody saw. But Nathan, the man of God, came with a message. It is time to repent. Maybe you are here today too. And you have fell, fallen in some traps. You have sinned against God and his holy word. It's not too late. You're probably looking at us on Facebook. And you're wondering and you're feeling bad. And the devil brings this guilt. You're not good enough for church. You wanted to come to church today. But you say, boy, I ain't feeling like I'm worthy to come to church, so I'll watch it online. You are not too far gone. The blood that was shed on Calvary can wash away any sin. Let's pray tonight. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now. Lord.